I thought the purpose of your request for assistance yes. is to be able to ascertain mm. the truth of the, ma be, uh, of the ma determine of the, the existence. Wait, allow me to finish. Sorry. May <laughs> culpa. Thank you, thank you. Allah, uh, I thought your purpose was to ask the assistance of the AMLA to enlighten you on what they have in connection with this complaint or the various complainants before you. Right? Let me read my letter to the AMLA. My request was for the assistance of the AMLA vis-a-vis -vis vis -vis the present investigation being conducted by your office, by our office rather, on account of the letter complaint of Riza Antiveros et al. by way of providing relevant information bearing on the financial transactions, if any, of the respondent and related transactions. In the reply that you received, was there any statement relative to the financial transactions that you were asking assistance? They furnished me a copy of the 17-page document and uh, the four-page summary of transactions. What transactions are you referring to, Madam Ombudsman? Bank transactions, trans financial actually existing? Again, I said earlier, how can I determine if they are actually existing when I cannot I'm not asking you how you can determine, but what I'm asking you is, did you determine? Already, your office? already answered. She said already that uh, she, she did not go, uh, go to the bank. To the bank, she did not go to the records. She relied on the report of AMLA. And yes. she presumed the veracity of the report of an agency authorized by law to handle this uh, type of uh, problem. Yes, but I'll, were you able to ascertain whether there is any investigation conducted by the May, may in I connection? Me, allow me to finish, and I'll give you all the opportunity. <laughs> Madam Ombudsman, will you kindly to finish on that? Mr. Presiding Justice, it was he who talked. May I call upon your honor? I hope the presiding officer is getting confused, he cannot get <laughs> who is uh, talking. Uh, is. By the way, will you please uh, uh, object if you want to object, so that I will know that you are objecting to the I, I was objecting, your honor, please. All right. All right, anyway. There uh, is no question, no. Will you kindly? There is any because examination of this. May I object? The court cannot deduce which of these Based from the testimony, there could be no conclusion or finding to be made by the court which of these accounts allegedly still exist. Objection, Your Honor. May I? What is the basis of the objection? The objection is based on the fact that the witness has repeatedly said that she has relied on presumptions of law, specifically Rule 131, Section 2, and Section 44 of Rule 130. Rule 130, Section 44 establishes the presumption that entries in official records made in the performance of duty by a public officer of the Philippines or by a person in the performance of a duty enjoined by law are prima facie evidence of the facts stated therein. Moreover, under Rule 131, Section 2, it is a conclusive presumption that official duty has been regularly performed. And the witness has already answered that she has relied on those presumptions when she dealt with the information from the AMLA. So that we finish right. this. Let the Ombudsman answer. She's a very intelligent witness. Your question, uh, Mr. Justice, is that uh, whether I verified if these whether accounts came, yeah, whether still exist. Whether you came exist. to know which of these accounts is still existing and whether they, it contain, they still contain the possible. You said as of today. At the time when you examined... No, no you, you stated as of today. I'm not saying that. No, you That's said that. Part of the Let's go by the transcript of stenographic no, I'm notes. withdrawing that. I'm All asking right. you another question. <laughs> so, no. The answer is no. All right. No. Mm -hmm. You did, you did mm -hmm. not. All right. 
That's all, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Madam uh, Ombudsman. Recross. Thank you, too. Nothing, Your Honor, please. No more recross? No more recross. All right. Thank you, Madam Ombudsman. We are, Mr. Uh, we are Mr. through President. with Mr. the Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Just a minute. Uh, I just want to clarify. Are, you, uh, are the two panels uh, true with the Ombudsman? I am true with the redirect, Your Honor. And there is an announcement by my colleague here that he has no recross. That's precisely. I'm asking you if you are true. We are true. I'm. Defense is true, Your Honor. Or I'm defense sorry. is uh, true with the witness. How about the prosecution? We are true, Your Honor. Please. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Madam, President. Madam uh, Ombudsman, uh, thank you for Mr. Uh, bearing with us. Yes? Uh, Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago wishes to ask a few uh, questions. No. Uh, and, the uh, gentle lady from uh, Italy. Senator Ilo. Gingona. Uh, um, Legarda all and right, Cayetano. All right, the, judge, the members of the uh, impeachment court uh, uh, wants, uh, want to uh, pose questions. Uh, now, please go ahead. May I ask, Mr. President, if the Senate engineer can put, put on all the lights? Thank you. I will ask first a very simple question. R.A. number 6770, the Ombudsman Act provi provides, and I read, Section 22, investigatory power. The office of the Ombudsman shall have the power to investigate any serious misconduct in office allegedly committed by officials removable by impeachment for the purpose of filing a verified complaint for impeachment if warranted. Question. Under the law, Ms. Witness, as Ombudsman, you can investigate any serious misconduct allegedly committed by the Chief Justice. Since an impeachment trial is now ongoing, the only purpose for your present investigation should be to file a verified complaint for impeachment by December of this year. Here is the question. Do you intend, if the defendant is acquitted, to file a second complaint for impeachment this year? Your Honor, it is the House which determines whether on the basis of the data it receives. I am not asking about who decides. I am asking about a provision in the Ombudsman yes. Act which provides Section 22. Mm -hmm. The Office of the Ombudsman shall have power to investigate, etc., for the purpose of filing a verified complaint for impeachment if warranted. That is your job. So is that job being undertaken now by the Ombudsman with his present investigation? Since there's no point investigating. Uh, an impeachment trial is already ongoing. Therefore, under Section 22, your sole purpose could only be to file a second complaint for impeachment after the one-year ban provided by law. That Therefore, I'm asking you the question, do you intend, if in this first impeachment trial the defendant is acquitted, do you intend to file a second impeachment complaint against him after the one-year ban? Madam Senator, if the, if the charges presently being investigated by the Office of the Ombudsman are not included in the impeachment charges, then I don't see any reason why there should be no chance to file another impeachment complaint. I'm sorry, I don't get the question very correctly. Mm. The answer very correctly. Is your answer a yes or a no? Is that a yes? You are for the purpose Intending of filing file. yes. an impeachment complaint? That's right. If that is warranted after a, the investigation, conclusion Thank of the investigation. You. Yes, that is what the law says. For the purpose of filing a verified complaint for impeachment, if warranted. Yes. If you think it, it is warranted, then, we then your it. only purpose will be to file a second impeachment complaint. Isn't that so? Is that a fair question? If it's warranted, we will. All right. Thank you. That is the only question. So we are placing the defendant on notice that if, even if this court acquits him, he can expect a second impeachment complaint by December this year. 